Hello, my name is Buffy Andrews, and for this module, I am going to be sharing with you all ways that you can incorporate yoga or movement throughout your day. Um, like I said, I'm Buffy, and I own the Madewell Center for Wholeness here in Wilmington, North Carolina. And here at the Madewell Center, we offer a lot of opportunities for people to get well. We offer mental health counseling, small group fitness classes, small group yoga classes, workshops and retreats as a holistic, rounded, well-rounded way um, just for you to be able to engage in healing. Um, so for this presentation today, I'm going to share my screen with you all, and hopefully we can kind of walk through um, some, you know, just different things that allow you to live well and feel whole. Um, let's see if I can move my face out of the way here a little bit. Okay. So hopefully this, you know, you can kind of see everything on here, but yeah, we're going to talk about movement as medicine today. Um, and first up, I just want to kind of, I guess, share what I view as like the problem. Um, I think a lot of us think that we can simply sit around and figure it out um, when really we need to learn how to embody our healing, right? And that's kind of what yoga teaches you. You know, yoga teaches you how to sit with uncomfortability. It teaches you how to slow yourself down, how to build awareness, um, but it's active, right? It's an engagement in that stuff. So trying to heal our bodies and our minds without movement is like trying to get clean without taking a shower, right? Um, it's like, we believe that if we just stare at the shower, it'll make us clean, but it won't. We have to get in the shower and then we can get clean. It's the same kind of thing with movement um, for our bodies. So just a few different types of movement that I love that I think are really beneficial for people. Um, obviously yoga is really beneficial and we'll talk more about that here in a little bit and kind of engage in some practical things you can do. Zumba is a great one. Zumba is, you know, dancing with like a little bit of that Spanish flair, gets you high energy, high cardio. Strength training is really great. Um, any kind of strength training that you can add to your day is going to help build muscle. It's going to help burn fat. And it's just going to be able to protect your bones and joints for a lot longer. Walking, same kind of thing. It's a good resistance um, cardio. Cycling can be a good resistance cardio. And then swimming is also really great. And these are all like gentle, right? So these are things that you could theoretically do for the rest of your life if you engage in them and, and practice them now. Um, so just a few of the benefits of movement on your mental health and wellness, right, overall is, for one, we have an increased awareness of ourself and our body when we engage in movement. Um, now, having that increased awareness of self and of your body is huge, right? Because if you don't know why your body feels the way it does, how are you ever going to work towards healing it, Right. So increased awareness of self and body is huge. The next one is boosting lymphatic fluid throughout your um, body. Now, for those of you who don't understand what lymphatic fluid is, your lymphatic fluid, it's a fluid that's moving all throughout your body that's carrying out toxins and, you know, also oxygen to different places and things like that. But the trick with lymphatic fluid movement is that it doesn't move unless you do. It is not like our blood that's just kind of constantly pumping throughout our our body, our lymphatic, lymphatic fluid stays stagnant unless we get moving, which tells me that if we don't move our bodies and stretch and open up our fashion, different things like that, like those toxins are not going to be able to move out to where they need to move out from, right? Um, another benefit of movement on your mental health and wellness is just that it practically like shakes up your energy, right? Um, and what I mean by that is like, have you guys ever had a time where you are, maybe you're sitting on the couch and you just feel kind of stuck, right? Like you feel stuck in your own skin. Well, have you ever noticed how if you like jump up off the couch, you can go get a glass of water or even heck, just like walking to, to the bathroom, right? Have you noticed how your energy or your mood like kind of will instantaneously shift, right? So that's what movement does for us throughout our day. But if we stay stagnant, our energy stays stagnant, right? Um, 
benefits again it increases our endurance right so like our ability to move is going to increase our ability to kind of push through different things okay um overall it can lower our stress hormones obviously it'll boost our endorphins and our serotonin um and they say movement can be as effective as medications and traditional therapy on your mental health and wellness which is huge. Now, obviously, if you're using movement purely as a way of just avoiding or ignoring things in your life that also still need to be dealt with, not going to be as beneficial. But if you're using movement as a way of honoring and showing up for yourself and um, being disciplined in the things that you know are good for you, that is going to have huge ramifications on your mental health and wellness. Um. We actually hosted here at the Madewell Center like a few months ago, we hosted a workshop. Um, well, my clinician, Brittany, hosted the workshop, um, but hers was just about how to get your groove back post-pandemic kind of thing. And she shared with us that there's a lot of science out there that actually shows that moving more often throughout your day and incorporating kind of like micro movements throughout your day can actually be more beneficial than if you had a sedentary lifestyle all day and then you went to the gym for like an hour and a half every day, which I think that's where a lot of that shame and judgment on ourselves kind of comes into play, right? Is like, we think that if we don't go to the gym every single day for an hour and a half, that we're like failing ourselves somehow, right? But that's just not true. If we can learn though, how to incorporate small movements throughout our day, which we'll practice some in a second, but learning how, I mean even just tiny things like learning how to get up and go to the printer instead of like having it right beside you right like move your printer three rooms down the hall kind of thing or um getting up every hour on the hour and taking a lap around your home or your building or your apartment um going up and down the stairs in between different things like all of those can be a great way to actually continue our lymphatic fluid movement and just boost energy levels, improve our mood, and decrease our stress all day long, which is really cool. So let's talk about some ways that we can incorporate yoga throughout our day. So again, I think a lot of people think of yoga as this way of like, oh, I have to be this Zen master, or I have to be a calm individual <laughs> to do yoga, or, you know, I have to go do yoga for an hour or it's like useless, right? But there's a lot of ways that we can incorporate yoga throughout our day. So I've listed some here and I'll show you all of them. So number one is what I like to call a take five. I like to use this throughout the day in between transitions. So if you are, you know, going from school to work or work to school or, school to home or, you know, anything like that, any kind of transition, sometimes a take five can be really beneficial in allowing your brain to pause and to catch up with where you are so that you can more in a more healthy way, move throughout your day without kind of dragging the baggage of the previous, you know, activity into the next one with yourself. So what I mean by this is Again, let's use the example of I'm coming from school to work, okay? And I'm like stressed out about a test or I've got like, you know, all these papers that I've got to write or something of that nature, but I've got to go to work <laughs> and I've got to show up at work and be present and do my work to the fullness that I can, right? So a uh, take five might look like, okay, I'm leaving work. I'm going to sit in my car. I'm going to close my eyes. And I'm just going to take five slow breaths and allow my brain to catch up before I walk into my workplace, right? So that might look like this, closing the eyes. Sometimes I just like to do an exhale to start. And then we're just going to take a nice inhale through the nose, exhaling through the mouth. And we're going to do four more. So inhale through the nose. Exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, 
And one more final breath. Boom, that's it. That took less than 30 seconds. And just notice how you feel after just five breaths throughout your day. Like that is yoga. It's bringing mindful awareness to that moment, right? Um, another one is chair stretches. So if I was gonna show you kind of what's here, I'll kind of scoot back a little bit. See if I can make this happen. I move my chair out of the way a little bit. Um, okay. So if I was going to show you some chair stretches, some simple ones might look like, okay, I'm going to inhale my arms up. I'm going to twist, right? Doing a little gentle twist here on either side. Maybe it looks like you do a seated figure four where you take your ankle, place it on your quad, right knee coming out the side of you. Maybe you just kind of gentle press, nice tall spine. In this tall spine position, you can then hinge at the waist, leaning forward just a little bit. That's going to stretch into your hips. And if you have a job where you are seated all day, stretching into those hips is huge. It's crucial, especially as women. If you're a woman and you're watching this, we tend to store a lot of emotions in our hips. Um, so if you're having a lot of stress, this is a great way to incorporate stress relief, right? Or you might kick out your, like sometimes what I'll do is I'll kick my leg out onto like a chair beside me and I'll do my work, right? So kicking out one leg at a time, do your work. Um, you could even, I put down here later, stretching while working, like you could sit on the floor and do a wide-legged fold and write your paper, you know, or have your computer out in front of you kind of thing. So you can do those as well. Um, and then an around the world is a fun one that I really like to do just to lengthen the whole body and again, kind of shake up the energy. So I'll show you guys what this around the world looks like. Let's see if I can move my chair. Here we go. Okay. So don't mind my pregnancy belly. Here we go. <laughs> um, so around the world, we're going to inhale our arms up, clasp opposite elbows above, just stepping back so you can see. And then what I like to do is step my feet about hips distance apart here. Okay. And then I like to drop down to one side, let that head be heavy. Inhale, sweep yourself all the way up. So we're gonna exhale down. Inhale, keep those arms high overhead, really use your core. Exhale down, inhale, rise. And then I like to do about five on each side. So if I've done five on this side, I like to go down the other way. Inhale, lift. Exhale, use that breath, just like that, right? And then the last one I have on here is elephant arms. So elephant arms is one of my favorites for being able to shake up that energy in your body. And honestly, for me, it feels like I am literally washing off negativity and toxicity from my body. So the way I like to do this one is I'll stand sideways so you can see, but Again, we're using our breath here. So you're gonna inhale, throw those arms up high in the sky. As you exhale, you're gonna bend down and sweep the ground and then inhale, raise it back up. So it'll be kind of quick, right? So we don't wanna go slow. So we're gonna inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. And you do it about five or six times really going to town, flailing those arms. And when you're done, you can stand back up at the top, hands by your side in your mountain pose, noticing how you feel in your body. Finding those full deep breaths. And I just want you to notice, right? Sometimes if you do it for long enough, you might notice kind of like a tingly feeling all over your whole body, right? And that's awesome. <laughs> like, it's good to have that, um, that tingly feeling. Because again, it can kind of feel like you're just washing off all the like negativity, all the dirt, all the grime, right? So that can be a great way to just reduce, again, some of that stress. Or again, if you need to shake up that energy, try and shake up that energy in that way. Now, a lot of yoga, excuse me, I'm going to take a sip of water. 
a lot of yoga practices really involve helping us stimulate our vagus nerve, right? And our vagus nerve is that nerve chain that runs from the base of your brain down through your whole trunk. And it actually connects to every single major organ that you have. Now, your vagus nerve being stimulated is a great way to allow your body to learn how to return back to that rest and digest state much quicker after a trigger or stressor occurs. So again, if we can figure out small ways to incorporate yoga throughout our day, this is how we can do it too with our breath. So I'm sure some of you have heard of box breathing. I'm just going to kind of quickly describe these, but box breathing is in like you could use your finger. You could just imagine a box, however you want to do it, but you're going to inhale for a count of four, hold for a count of four, exhale for a count of four, hold for a count of four. And I like to kind of draw that box. It kind of just helps you visually experience that. Alternate nostril breath, I'm going to take off my glasses for this one, can be a great way to, again, simulate that vagus nerve. Also, it really helps you focus. So practicing alternate nostril breathing, it can be kind of complicated, but once you get it, you got it, right? So the way we like to do alternate nostril breath is by taking, you can take your pointer finger, middle finger, anchor them kind of in between your eyes here. Then I like to take my thumb and my ring finger. I like to wiggle them around so I know where they're at. And then all you're going to do is you're going to press into your nostril with your thumb, inhale through the alternate nostril, plug that nostril, release the thumb, exhale, inhale on the same side, plug, exhale, inhale, same side, plug, exhale. So if you'll notice, I'm switching on my exhales, right? So you would close your eyes for that. You could put a timer on your phone for just a minute or so. Um, and, you know, just see how you feel. Again, it's all about noticing. Like, that's kind of the cool thing about yoga is just notice. Like, just notice the shifts that happen for yourself, right? Um, with vagus nerve stimulation and breathing practices in general, especially when we're thinking about coming down from a state of stress and trying to calm down quickly, we always want to focus on longer exhales than our inhales because when we breathe naturally, like when we breathe in, our heart rate naturally rises, right? When we breathe out, our heart rate naturally slows down. So if we can focus on increasing that length of time of our exhales over our inhales, we're going to have a like more chance for that breath to slow down and our heart rate to slow down than if we keep it kind of short and shallow, right? Wave breath is another fun one. I'll scoot back so you can see. Placing one hand on the chest, one hand on the belly. What you're gonna do is you're gonna inhale. I like to inhale through my chest first, then the rib cage, then the belly. And then as you exhale, your belly is gonna compress, then your rib cage, then your chest, right? So it looks kind of like this. You'll start to notice your body feels like that wave, right? Or you could inhale to the belly, ribs, chest, compress chest, ribs, belly, either one. And then belly breathing as a whole, you can place both hands on your belly here. And we really want to focus on using those abdominal muscles, right? So as you inhale, belly is going to expand a little bit like a balloon. Exhale, navel compresses to spine, okay? Inhale, belly expands. Exhale, navel compresses in. So if you feel like your chest is rising and falling more than your belly, we want to shift the focus to the belly here, okay? And all of these are going to stimulate the vagus nerve and just help you, again, overall reduce stress um, and be more mindful of your body. So again, just kind of overall, we want to keep it simple. We want to keep it foundational, right? There is no need to be extravagant in the ways we incorporate movement into our day. And I don't want you guys to stress yourselves out thinking again, oh man, I have to go to the gym for an hour every single day or it's useless because that's a false narrative. And that's a lie that has been conditioned for our society to believe for such a long time. 
but we can actually be so healthy for ourselves if we kind of go back to tradition, right? Like, I don't know if you guys have been to Clean Juice, but I kind of copied their slogan a little bit, tweaked it. But, um, you know, again, thinking like we can incorporate alternative ways of healing easily in our daily lives. Sometimes when we hear alternative healing or holistic or whatever, we tend to think that that's like, oh my gosh, it's going to cost me an arm and a leg and, you know, all that kind of stuff. But the reality is it can be really simple. Alternative isn't new, really. It's a return to tradition. Clean Juice has a phrase that says organic. It's not a new trend. It's a return to tradition. Um, and I feel that way about holistic health and healing too. You know, like when we think back to the ways our ancestors used to live, you know, it's like they didn't have cars and they didn't park in the closest spot to the store. They had to walk miles to get places or like saddle up their horse and buggy to get somewhere. And, and I'm not saying that having all of these easy, convenient things for ourselves is a bad thing, but it doesn't allow us to engage in the ways that our ancestors used to naturally be able to engage in their health and healing. Like now we have to fight for that a little bit more, but for you guys being able to incorporate these yoga practices, just simple movements throughout your day or getting up and going on a bike ride or walking up and down the stairs one time at lunch, you know, something like that can be super simple and it's the medicine that our bodies need. Um, it doesn't have to be fancy. It doesn't have to be extravagant. Just keep it simple and incorporate these ways into your daily life, right? Thank you guys so much for tuning into this module. I hope it was helpful. If you need any assistance with figuring out some of these ways to kind of incorporate micro movements, incorporate healthy food, process trauma that you've got going on, please, please, please reach out to us at the Madewell Center. We would love to help walk with you in that healing journey. I put here our contact information so you can go to madewellcenter.org, follow us at the Madewell Center, or just reach out via email info at madewellcenter.org. Um, and soon I will have my wellness buff <laughs> website up and running. Um, that you can work with me one-on-one. -on -one. Um, but again, at Madewell Center, we've got plenty of mental health clinicians. We've got multiple health coaches, fitness class opportunities, all for an affordable price. So we would love to help walk with you in your healing and wellness journey. And I hope that you can find ways to incorporate those small yoga practices all throughout your day. Maybe even after finishing watching this, you can go take five for yourself. Thank you so much.